right, let's go ahead and jump into this. <clears throat> okay, here we go. All right, so if you don't know who Jessica and I are, we'll just take a quick minute. So this actually is a picture of my brother and I. Uh, we were at my aunt's wedding, and uh, I was a holy tyrant. Uh, the smile that I have today is based off of the one that I had when I was four years old. Uh, and if you haven't connected with us on social, please make sure that you connect with us there, and my email address is there. And then there's Jessica. Jessica, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Yeah. Hi, everybody. If you haven't had or if we haven't had the pleasure of meeting, I am so glad you're here. What I do at Proud Mouth, well, I was one of our first employees, which I'm very proud about. I used to work with advisors on their podcasts and content marketing, and then I shifted over to working on Proud Mouth's content um, for all of our major channels, including webinars. And just quickly, this is a photo of me from when I was five years old. This was actually my birthday. And this is actually one of the first photos where I, where I remember it being taken. You know, I was, I was just old enough. I like remember posing and thinking to do that. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's here we go. Five steps to a powerful podcast brand. Go ahead, Matt. Um, so, so I also want everybody to know that, that one of the reasons why, uh, you know, Jessica and I do these together, she, she also produces the top advisor marketing podcast. And so when you guys listen to the show, which I, I hope you do, Jessica is a very integral part in everything that we do, uh, for, for the show specifically. All right. So we're going to go through how, how many, how many, uh, we, we've got what, eight, how many things we have eight, yeah, eight points right? Seven points. So we've got eight, seven points. So the first one is that we want to make sure that you really truly understand your concept. One of the biggest issues in the world of podcasting is you have to be able to close your eyes and see exactly who you are talking to. If you cannot do that, you are not going to have a successful show because here's the deal. You can't podcast to everybody. Everybody's not going to listen. And the picture here, which is one of my favorite quotes or one of my favorite things from uh, one of my favorite shows of all times, Parks and Rec, this is John Raffio. Uh, and what he, uh, he and Tom, another character, have a podcast about nachos, right? And what they do is they review and eat it. They used to eat nachos uh, on the podcast. That level of specificity is incredibly important. So, so you have to understand who you're talking to. The second thing that you have to know is what is your consistent message? And I, I think Proudmouth, we, uh, our whole team has done a very, very good job of having very, very clear and succinct branding messages. Be your own loud, rise above the noise, unapologetically be yourself. Um, making sure that you're giving yourself permission to do all of those things, uh, that you have to create consistent concept over time. Cause if you do, you're going to stop talking to skeptics and you're gonna be working with fans. You need to have those talking points. We call it branded language. And you have to have that. And what you really do is when you really nail this concept, you do what Jessica and I call the sprinkle, which is throughout the entire episode, you're sprinkling in your branded language. So uh, I, I really do want people to participate in the chat because we don't want to just be talking at you the entire time. Do you have branded language, uh, a tagline or something that's a philosophical thing that you always want to make sure that you're telling clients and prospects and in your content? Go ahead and put that in chat because we'd love to go ahead and review that, which also leads us to the valuable, uh, the, 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 the unique value, the UVP of, of the podcast. Why are you podcasting? You should have a mission. Ours is to help teach financial services professionals to stop being the best kept secret in their area. We also want to free them from the torment of sales by helping people buy from them instead of you having to sell to them. That's why we do the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. Um, so the unique value proposition is vital to your philosophical underpinnings of making sure that you are communicating effectively. Every show needs to have these two mindfulness components to it. The first one, why is anybody going to listen to you? Uh, it isn't because you're the most brilliant person in the world, because I'm sure you are, right? I'm sure each and every one of you who are on this are wicked smart and are really good at what you do. 
but they need to have a payoff. In fact, uh, Dr. Robert Cialdini talks about the principle of reciprocity. So if you um, give away enough, it is okay for you to get feedback and say, uh, it is okay to ask for something in return, but you have to be giving things away. So every single solitary show should have this philosophical underpinning that you're building everything on. And then the last thing is, is why is my podcast worth listening to? <laughs> well, uh, is it wildly entertaining? Are you a good storyteller? Are you going to be giving insider tips that only your clients uh, get to hear or industry secrets that nobody talks about? Those are the sorts of things that you have to continue to think about when you're creating your UVP for your podcast. Now, and again, for us, this, this is what we have written in this. So if you go to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast page, this is uh, what we say that we do. And I told you the other kind of UVP branded language that we use in the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. And you can see right here, we end it with unapologetically themselves because that is such a huge component. And I've said this a million times and I will say it as many times as I can. If you are unapologetically yourself, you have no competition. Um, and when we are creating, Jessica and I are creating the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast, this is always what we're looking for. In fact, Jessica, I'm gonna digress just for a quick moment. So I interviewed DeAndre Koch yesterday. He hasn't gone live yet. And so he's a client of ours. Uh, and we we absolutely love him dearly. Uh, he does he does a lot of things that we don't normally do for clients. So he has a weekly show. Uh, and it is not about financial practice. His financial practice is actually about travel hacks. And it was so neat because part of his whole brand um, is, is his experiences while he's traveling. Uh, and he has given him permission to be, because he's really nerdy about it. And he's so excited and happy about the places that he goes um, that he really, that's a huge part of his, his content marketing. So yeah. All right. What's next? Moving on. Okay. The podcast, <laughs> the podcast name. All right. This is where a lot of people fall down, which is, which is frustrating. It's a little bit sad. Because you think that you have to have it be, you know, Buckingham Wealth Management's podcast, right? And I mean, that's not a slam on Kitsis, by the way, because I know that's not what a show is called. That's just the first thing that came to mind. But it really does need to resonate with your niche. And we're going to give you some unbelievably clear examples in just a few minutes. But I also want to make sure that, that you are answering a question for that ideal target market with the show. Right. So think about Google search words. Um, when you're on a podcasting app, um, how would you want, and this is the pre thought that you need to have going into the show, what are the things that you should really think about if somebody searches this? Bam, I want to come up. Right. And so that's really important for you to in your podcast planning journey, um, even if you already have an existing show to make sure that you are ticking that box, because people ask the Internet questions. And if you are the answer to that question, you're going to come up in search engines even more. And then last but not least, it's got to have a hook. Right. And, and we're going to go ahead and give you a couple of examples of that. And we've actually categorized these two. And Jessica, I, I love I love how you have categorized these because there are these four categories to really make it so your podcast pops when somebody sees it. Oh, thank you. And I think they'll really bring your principles to life, Matt. The first category is called the mind reader. It's it's sort of uncanny, <laughs> but but in a positive way. What you're doing with this sort of name is you are using your audience's exact words and exact thoughts and putting them right in front of them, which is a great way to catch their attention and stop them in their tracks. It's a great way to really prove that you understand what it is they need to know. And this sort of specificity is really, really hard to forget. So it's more likely that people will remember your title. I also like really like this second example, Matt, of the relax its retirement. Because it reminds me of a response to someone's thoughts, mm. yeah. someone's worries and concerns about retirement. It really sets the stage for a, a podcast that's going to give guidance and reassurance. 
Okay. Next up is total intrigue, which is really <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what it sounds like piques people's curiosity. So they just they have to click and see what is this all about. Now, oftentimes, this is not explicitly financial. And what you might see is in the tagline, that's where they give a little bit of clarity and context about um, that it's a financial podcast and here's the niche that they're serving. And exhibit A, <laughs> no tricks allowed. Um, Aaron's podcast was actually launched today. So congratulations, Aaron. Now, what's important to know is that Aaron came to us with this distinct brand developed by Mellow Brew Marketing, such a talented team. They came up with the company name Cactus and then his tagline, Prick Free Financial Advice. But Matt, I would love to know, how did we get to this exact title of No Pricks Allowed? Yeah, so so Aaron is here. So Aaron, please uh, don't don't correct me if I I don't have this perfectly clear uh, because I have a very uh, uh, jaded image in my brain on how all of this happened. But one one of the most important things that that we really try to do for our clients is is listen. And so so Aaron had when he came to the sales process, he actually had podcast names all, all ready to go, uh, and he was reading them through. And I remember him saying, "No pricks allowed." And I remember hearing something very specific in his voice, whether it was just a small inflection or something. And, and it was like, it was like, came at me and it was like, oh, this has got to be the name. And I, and I said, yeah, I was like, dude, that's it. Um, and, 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 and I said, say it again. And, and he said it again and he was like, yep, yep, that's it. So. One of the things that that I one of the reasons why we really wanted to use this as an example is one, um, please take a look at his website, which which is uh, which I, do we have that link? I don't think I have that link handy. Um, Aaron, can you put that link your link in because I know you're here um, into the chat so that people can see it. But I just love the idea of standing out so strongly. I mean, this is going to get your attention. If it doesn't, then guess what? You're not an ideal client for Aaron. <laughs> That's right. Oh, thanks, Aaron, for putting that in the chat. Thanks, Aaron. Okay, let's keep going. Next example is making hay, which is part of a phrase. And then we have an example of a tagline that makes it clear that this is for veterinarians. And then the quiet part, like total intrigue, eh, Matt? Um, there's no tagline, and I kind of like that. It's like, I need to know, I need to know. And even before I do know what exactly is going on here, the name sets the stage for a show that's not just about finances. So I really like that as well. Now, our second category, go ahead, Matt. Yes. Well, we've, we talk about this a lot, right? So, so those examples, with the exception of uh, Marsha's, the, the veterinary, which is a very specific niche call out, really were just really intriguing, right? They, they, they either answered a question that we know people ask, or they were a response to a question like relax, it's retirement. And now we're going to show you the level of specificity that some of the shows that are actually quite successful that we're doing work with. So the first one might seem crazy, but Dennis works with telecom people. That's all he does. In fact, when him and I were in the sales process, uh, I had told him that he needed to have it be the Verizon podcast or the Verizon benefits. And then we were told by Verizon, they wouldn't let us do that. So anyway, um, so, so he works with telecom executives with, you know, very um, complex uh, benefit packages. And, and, and look, I mean, it, it's got everything. This is about your telecom retirement. If you're in telecom, you're going to click on this. It's also got the cell phone tower. I, I love the balance of this too, Jessica. My team did, or our team did a really good job. I also like that it's all in lower caps. It doesn't seem so aggressive. Mm -hmm. It seems a little bit more welcoming. Um, and I also think the color schemes are fantastic, which by the way, um, are entirely in line with his website. And here's another great example. So uh, Matthew, who came in about six, nine months ago. So he's been with us for a little while. Um, when we were, when he was going through the sales process with me, um, he was really pushing back with me because part of what we do during the sales process, I asked, do you have a specific niche? And he's like, yeah, I really only work, uh, I only work with med tech people in in the greater uh, um, Tri-City area in um basically Minneapolis, right? So Minneapolis, St. Paul. 
Um, I don't know why they call it Tri-City. But anyway, Twin Cities, that's what they call it, Twin Cities. And I was like, okay, let's do some math. And here was the math. Okay. So, because Matthew knew all of this. Okay. How many med tech workers are there in Minneapolis? And he's like, 30,000. Okay. Out of those 30,000, how many of them would be ideal clients for you? And he said, 10,000. And I said, if we get a hundred of them listening to your show and they become fans, could you handle a hundred new clients? He's like, of course not. I was like, okay. So, so that's the level of specificity and focus because here's the deal. If Matthew gets three to five new clients from his show, from this specifically that are med tech professionals, it's a, it's a total win and it will pay for everything for the life of all of his marketing and also set him up to be very successful. All right. We got one more. Now, <clears throat> there are lots of things about this that I like. Now, the client absolutely loves this, so I'm not going to be a schmuck. Um, and there are a couple of things that I, 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 I'm not a big fan of. Um, one, the, the name of the show is fantastic. I think the Widow Empowerment Project is one of the best names that we've come up with in a really, really long time because it's just clear as a bell, much like the other examples that we've used on who he works with. Um, I think it's a little busy with the image, though. I would have liked to have made have me a couple of people uh, in this. He really liked this. this. Is actually, by the way, branded stuff from his website from the Prepared Retirement Institute. Um, but this is another example, Jessica. You used this with the the making hay example. That it's very clear who's bringing you this show, and I think a lot of you should do that more and more. Um, brought to you by, powered by. Um, it just adds a little bit more awareness of who you are as a financial services professional uh, and, and can make a really big difference. All right. So we've got a couple more examples. Oh, actually, we got one more. We got the fourth example. All right. Yeah. Our fourth type of name is the wish granter. And this one has such a strong emotional appeal. And that's what makes it unforgettable because your listener's desired outcome is right there in the title. It's so, it's so, so aspirational. So always a good choice. Here's just a few examples, Life Unlimited, Scale to Sell, amazing. They came to us with this name. And then retire to a life you love. Like, you know, who doesn't want that? <laughs> so great examples of the, the wish granter. And before we, Matt's going to talk about this. Before we move on, I have a prompt for all of you. I would love for you to think about either right now or later on is if you were to write a mind reader name, your, that means you're including your clients, your listeners, thoughts and words. What might that title look like? So what is a big question that your podcast is going to answer? So what is a big question that your podcast is going to answer? So I'm going to put a link in here in, in just a minute to, as you guys are coming up with that sort of stuff. And Jessica, I, I'm going to, I'm going to challenge our audience based off something you just said there, because a, a lot of people who are coming to these webinars have existing podcasts, right? You can change the name of your show. I just want everybody to know that. You can change the cover art to the show. You can change the intro. You can change the outro. And in fact, some of the most successful podcasts that are out there are iterative, right? They, they actually do change mm -hmm. over time. So if, you, if you're 50 episodes into your show and after hearing this stuff, you're like, wow, I could probably be more specific, do it absolutely do it. And by the way, your audience is going to love you for it because it's showing the evolution of your thought leadership, the evolution of your brand. All of that is very, very, very important. Okay. We're also going to help you with this too, because we have a free resource. I'm putting it in chat right now. Uh, so all of you can click on this and this is a naming convention. Um, I don't know. I'm missing. I feel like I'm missing a word, Jessica. What am I missing? It's like a brainstorming there you go. guide. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and ticks all of the boxes that Jessica was just talking about on the previous one. So it's going to help you. So, so on the, the, this, the, the left-hand side here with those three categories, 
it's just such a good way for you to suss out, uh, you know, the brand of the show. And then of course, uh, you know, there's some great AI out there uh, that will help you generate a great podcast name. Uh, you can just put it into GPT or open AI or blah, 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 Gemini or whatever the heck they all are now. Uh, and that can really make a big difference, at least get you starting to come up with ideas but then you really do need to follow the steps here. You have to Google it with the word podcast. You have to do it, um, making sure that you you go to the podcast players. All you really have to do is go to Spotify and Apple just to be safe, by the way. You don't have to go to every single solitary one of them. And then last but not least, you got to do the simple Boolean search on USPTO.gov. Um, which by the way, it's USPTO.gov. And you're just going to do a simple search um, to make sure that it has not been used, marked, or used for educational purposes. Um, it's just a really good way to cover your butt. Excellent. Okay. Can you believe it? We're already on cover art. Okay. Mm -hmm. I really like to hear your thoughts and everyone's thoughts as we go along about how you can use cover art to stand out. After all, this is really people's first impression of your podcast is the visual representation that appears on podcast players, you know, social media, everywhere where you have your podcast. Okay. And a major way to stand out is with colors. Now, if you're an advisor whose website is already branded in very traditional advisor colors, like blue or green, you can still go with unexpected colors for your cover art while still being you know cohesive with your brand so one way to do that is really to think of classic color combinations and take inspiration from nature which is really what we see here with larry sprung i see the green like purple always goes so well with green and i just think of violets growing in a garden now something you could do with getting inspiration from nature you could actually pop an image into Canva and it will show you photo colors. So you can start to look for, you know, other, like maybe you want to see what this golden color is and start to play around with little variations that will still match really well with your overall branding. Another thing you can do is lean into complementary colors, opposite colors going across the color wheel. So if your main brand is blue, try orange. You know, if it's green, try a little bit of red. You could use, you know, that other color completely on your graphic, or you could use both of them because complementary colors, what I've learned is that they'll always give you um, some contrast. So it's like a little go-to. Okay, the other way about this is to use other brand colors. Here's an example from Sunrise. On their website, the orange is a little bit more of an accent. It's the color of their buttons. But here on the graphic, it really takes center stage and shines, no pun intended. And then if you're on their website and you go to podcast, you're going to see this graphic. It's going to stand out, but it's still matching luggage with their brand. So it's popping out, but it's not like jarring, you know? Okay. Photos, Matt, I feel you're like passionate. <laughs> you're passionate about this. Um, okay, a lot of, sorry, were you gonna say something? No, I agree. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Matt, human faces. A lot of advisors, I don't know, maybe it's fair to say, some people don't want to have their image on their cover art. And, you know, in this webinar, we've already seen so many great examples that don't have a photograph of the person. So that's totally a legitimate, um, successful way to go. But I will say there are some advantages to putting, you know, an image of you on the graphic. Um, humans are wired to look for faces. I remember when Katie Braden was on our podcast talking about video and talking about how people, they see faces in the clouds. It's like, we're just wired to seek them out. And then I think about an advisor podcast, it's educational. People want to learn from you. They're stepping into a topic that's finances, you know, that's already intimidating. So showing a photo of yourself smiling, looking approachable, looking relaxed can help to set the tone and break down barriers. 
okay. If you decide to go with an image of yourself, it is a good idea to consider a photo shoot because not all photos of ourselves are created equal. I can definitely say that <laughs> about myself. Um, some headshots, you could get away with them, but then some headshots just really scream headshot. And then, you know, you might have a great photo of you that was taken at a conference, but it just doesn't translate well to the graphic. So consider a photo shoot, which is what our clients, um, doctors Carrie and Jessica did. And it gives you an opportunity to use like more of your body to pose for them. They're, they're wearing their uniforms, which makes sense for the podcast. And overall, it just allows you to convey the whole vibe of your show. So that is a really, really good avenue. And Matt, just jump in if you have anything to add. Okay. Stock images. Matt, you, you touched on this earlier. People wonder, are stock images an option? Um, yeah, they're an inexpensive option, but it really matters on which ones you choose. Like I, most of us, we're just tapped out of the, the lighthouses and the couples giving each other piggyback rides on the beach. Like, you know, that's that's generic. It's not the way to stand out. So if you're going to go with stock images, look for ones that tie in with your brand, or sorry, with your podcast title or your purpose, like unleash your retirement with the dog. And it's not just any photo of a dog. It's not a dog on a couch, like in a pile of blankets, <laughs> you know, although um, it's, you know, this is a dog looking happy and enjoying life. So stock images are an option. Just be very, very intentional with them. Okay. Podcast description, Matt, sorry, I just really need to pause and take a drink one second. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I'm going I'm, to go, go back actually to two slides while you take a, a little bit. So here's another thing about the, the stock images, right. Or, or this stock image specifically unleash your retirement dogs, not wearing a leash, right. There's a, and there's a lot of subtext here that, that we, we really pay attention to uh, when we're creating cover art for our clients to make sure that we're communicating that and it has the feel and the essence of what the show is supposed to be about. Um, and I, and here's the deal. People are programmed for faces. People love animals. I, I mean, oh my gosh, it's one of those wonderful uh, written rules of marketing. And it's something we believe you should lean into. Yes, thank you so much for that. I love that. The dog isn't wearing a leash. Okay, now we're getting into our podcast description. This is what will appear alongside your podcast, again, on all podcast players. This is where you are going to answer the big question for your listeners, which is, what's in it for me? Why should they listen to your show? In this description, you are going to incorporate that unique value proposition that Matt talked about earlier. Why is your show worth listening to? And you can see the components listed here. What I don't want you to forget, which some people tend to overlook or they choose not to include, is your name. Who are you? I think some people figure their name is already on the graphic or no one no one really cares. And yes, they care. of course they care. You know, they're, tun they're tuning in to learn from you. And what you have the opportunity to do here is to really make a connection to your niche. Really succinctly talk about why do you serve them? Again, just what's that connection? So if you're serving teachers, are you a retired teacher? Were your parents teachers? Talk about that right away. Again, helps break down barriers and really lets people know that, that you get them. Okay. Now, here's a formula that we use that you are welcome to adopt for your podcast. We'll send out the replay as well, so you'll, you'll have a copy of this. But what you're doing is you're welcoming people to the podcast. You're weaving in that value proposition to talk about how you solve their biggest challenge, and then you talk about how you do it. Is it through interviews? Is it through stories? And then a slight variation that you can do, which a couple slides ago, Josh Leonard also did, is you can state that pain, that problem right at the top. 
So the med edit podcast is for people who, you know, want medical information, but are tired of um, wafting. <laughs> That's not the right word, you know, digging through the internet. So you're getting real advice from real doctors. So put the pain and then position your podcast as having the solution. That's a great way about it as well. All right, Max. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I, it's interesting that we're we're highlighting a, a non-financial podcast because I don't think a lot of people realize that we we do have some outliers. Uh, so you know we we really do focus on uh, financial services professionals, but but what we do even better is in highly regulated environments. And and by the way, and if you don't know this, doctors are highly regulated, and so there's a lot of compliance oversight that we have to do with the MedEdit podcast. Uh, that we are uniquely qualified to make sure that we're uh, just have a lot of areas of redundancy. Okay. When somebody clicks on your show, you need to grab them. And we're about to do a live podcast review uh, here in just a few minutes. A wonderful, wonderful person from New Zealand uh, went ahead and she uh, sent uh, breadwinning mums as her example. We're going to go over that in just a few minutes. Um, but it, it it's the, the, you got to grab somebody super, super fast in the intro. It also really does set the stage and the feel. This is why music is so important. This is why the voice talent is so important. <clears throat> when Jessica and I were practicing this, I was like, Jessica, I don't know if you know this, but uh, so I still do some voice work for our clients. Uh, they can actually choose me. Well, I don't know why anybody would do that, but they do uh, to go ahead and read their intro. And, and, and before I read the intro, I will listen to the music, which we got a great example of an intro and some music here in just a minute. Um, and what we do as professional voice talents is we start, we feel the music, right? So that we can make sure that the pace and the pentameter of our introduction flows with the music. Um, and it needs to be distinct. I mean, I could play you a bass line right now and you're going to immediately know it's Seinfeld, right? I could do, uh, you know, the first chord of the Friends theme song and you're going to know what the show is. Your show needs to have that too. And then you also need to put a bow on it at the end. You know, thank people for listening. Always thank them. People like to be thanked. And they also like to know that you appreciate them. It is not redundant. It is it is accepted and it's actually promoted. We really promote, want you to do that. But the other thing is, is if you've given somebody 27 minutes of great information, please give them a specific call to action. One call to action. That call to action should be iterative. At the beginning, it should not be episode one, buy my product. Sorry, it's just, it doesn't work. Um, you know, episode 20 uh, should be buy my product. But in between things is download the white paper. You know, please make sure you visit our website, subscribe to the show, follow us on social. Those are a lot more uh, gentle ways to uh to to engage your audience and that's very important and also please 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 make sure that you have the compliance uh disclosures and disclaimers that you need at the end of every show if not you're going to be in trouble okay. Matt, we actually, also go ahead oh, sorry i was going to say I have an ex i have an example from one of our clients of their intros would you like me to play it now yeah, I'm uh give me two seconds. I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put a link to their show in the okay. go ahead. Let me make my way. Okay. All right. I'll play a little bit of the intro and I just want you all to listen and tell me how you feel while this intro plays. Okay, let's go. We believe every person has the right to realize all that is possible for their future. Are you someone who is near retirement, who has been diligent about accumulating wealth and is now navigating the what's next heading into the next chapter of your life? Welcome to the Dream Architect Life Podcast, where money and mindset meet with Brian Sweet and Brittany Ann. Okay, sorry, <laughs> how would I put it there? Matt, how do you, how do you feel when you listen to that? Yeah. So Kristen just put her voice is so calming. I know. Yes, it I really know. is. Uh, it, it definitely feels like a dream, but man, we could do a whole episode on this or a whole webinar on this. 
But if you if you go back and listen to where she broke when the music picked up, it was perfect. Right. It's like all it's it's that it's that where is the crescendo? But but that's absolutely how I felt. Now I know you've listened to this a couple of times because I know we practiced this a couple of times. Yes. Do you still have the same feeling listening to that as you did when you heard it the first time? Not exactly. The first time I picked up a little bit more on the music. And I was like, ooh, this is this is so dreamy. Mm. But then this time I pick up, I picked up more on her voice. Mm. And I was thinking, wow, like she sounds, she sounds really confident. But I really, since Kristen put out calming, I'm like, yeah, honestly, that's what it is for me. Really, really calming and approachable. And when you're creating the intro uh, and you're doing professional voice stuff, you should answer questions. Like you can say, I want it to be calming, but confident. I want it yeah. to be exciting, but professional. And in those of us who do professional voice work, know how to incorporate those emotions in our reads. And also generally, if you outsource this, if you don't use us to do this, if you outsource it, you have to tell them that and whoever's providing you with the voice work should give you multiple examples. And then this is where it gets beautiful is when you can go ahead and say, I need it 20% more. And a great voice talent can do that. Um, and, and that's, you know, we've actually got a whole bevy of, of different voice talents that we use. We've got unbelievably excited people to unbelievably, you know, kind of not morose, but serious, right? And we've got all of those people because this is one of the things that we do for our clients. All right, now we've got a formula. And again, the reason why we pay close attention to this uh, and why we want to make sure that you all understand is we have these systems in place because we know that you all will probably overthink this terribly. And so we have these um, templates that we can use, but we um, modify them for every single solitary client that we have. Uh, just so you know, so this is not exactly how everyone is done, but we're trying to give you all the guidance because the other thing is, is we know that this works and we also know that it has to be a very specific time. Your intro should be 30 seconds or less. And from a word count perspective, you're hovering right around 25 to 30 seconds, depending on how fast the, the voice talent's going to read it. And then, of course, we have an example of a disclosure, um, which, by the way, if you are uh, regulated with SEC or FINRA and your compliance department says, well, we need disclosures and disclaimers, if you use us, we can provide them with examples, hundreds of examples of disclosures and disclaimers that we have done for our other clients. Um, like, for instance, if you bring up tax or if you bring up something legal, there are very specific things that you have to say. And we know what those things are because we want to make sure that you are entirely covered. Um, what else? Oh, oh, do you want to do you want to just talk about story blocks real quick? Because we're not going to play anymore because we want to do the live review. So, yeah, yeah, we have a link to story blocks. I thought, you know, some, some members of our audience might want a resource for royalty free music and what our team uses is story blocks. So it's something I could vouch for. So we'll share that with you in the chat. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Um, royalty free is really, really important. And, and Jessica, I, I don't think I've told the story for a long time, so I'm going to say it now. Um, one of our first clients was like, I want Don't Fear the Reaper by Blue Oyster Cult. So we were new. <laughs> Kirk and I had just started the company. Jessica, I don't think you actually started at that point. That. This was like right away. And and we're like, Kirk and I were like, uh, can we do that? So I, because I'm nerdy about this. So I reached out to, to Blue Oyster Cult to find out if we could use 30 seconds of it. And it was going to be like $50,000 or something like wow. that. So of course I went back to the client and he's like, well, can you find music that's like that? Why? Yes, we can. Uh, and so that's when we were, it's actually one of the reasons we started using um, story blocks. The other thing too, is if you're trying to use music that is not uh, that you don't have the rights to Spotify knows it and they will shut you down and shut you out and you're not getting back on there. So please make sure that you have royalty free music where you own the rights to the music. All right. This is my, I'm so excited. I'm nervous about this too, by the way. Okay. Yes. Time for the live review. Let me go into that. We're looking at breadwinning moms. And as we do this, 
we'd all love to hear from you. What are you, you know, what's working well? What could be improved here from a branding perspective? And keeping in mind everything we've gone over about concept, naming, description, cover art, intro, outro. Matt, shall we start with the name? Absolutely. Um, I actually can't say enough about this. I, I think it is a brilliant name for a show. Um, <clears throat> I love, I love how it makes me feel. I think it makes me feel very, very warm, but also makes me feel that, that this podcast is, if I was a breadwinning mom, mom, as we would say in the States, yeah. this is for me. Like, this is for me. I know exactly who the audience is. And if you look at the description, even though it's a, it's a little bit wordy, um, it's very, very clear. Uh, in fact, mm -hmm. uh, you want to highlight, because I love you did this when we were practicing, uh, the, the kind of UVP of this? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they've done such a great job. Jane is talking about how they debunk. We're all just highlighted here, debunking the myths cheering each other on yep. showing the world it's okay to be a mom and pursue excellence yeah i was saying to matt earlier with a, a topic like this it could have gotten a little more like for lack of a better word like heavy or serious mm -hmm. and you know if that's the tone that's fair it could have been like we're combating the stigma of working moms we're addressing societal pressures but I've listened to the show and that is not the tone. It's very warm. It's very open. It's very honest and even, even funny in moments because it's so honest. So I just can't say enough good things. Yeah. Like Jane did such a great job of presenting that mission, that UVP in a really conversational, a little bit lighthearted toned down way. And Matt, I agree with you about the name. Even when Jane submitted, just she just submitted the idea to us mm -hmm. on LinkedIn. I just saw the name. I was like, I, lo I love it. Because if I'm part of this group, I feel like I belong as a listener to the podcast. And I also like moms rather than like breadwinning mother <laughs> or mothers. Because <laughs> I just would not suit the mood of this podcast. Moms is warm and familiar. So I love that. I do so, want to say, oh, sorry, go ahead, Matt. Well, so, so where, where there's this little um, disclosure here. Yeah. Um, one of the problems is Podbean, which is one of the reasons we don't use them. It doesn't really give you enough flexibility to really manipulate some of the fonts and text and things like that. Um, it, I would actually have made this disclosure specific that it was a disclosure, right? right. So I wouldn't have put this actually in the, the, the narrative, the description of the show in the way that it is. Um, but I, I don't think you can do that on Podbean. So. Yeah. I was wondering about that. Like, could this be even a separate paragraph, but I, yeah, I like the idea of like putting disclosure. So there's a little yep. bit of a, at least an, a stop and start here yep. on the description. Something I would love to see in the description is who is Jane? Like, <laughs> you know, we take it for granted and just think people, people know who we are or it doesn't matter to them it really really does Jane is our host so who is Jane um, why does she care so much about about breadwinning moms it, is she one so who is Jane and I also would like to know the format of the podcast mm. is it an interview I already know that it is is it an interview format are we hearing stories that tells me what I can expect what do you think Matt I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I, I think there's so much missing real estate here that would just just very clearly tell the audience uh, the expectations. And, and Jessica, I've talked about this almost on every webinar, I think. But, you know, when I was a marriage counselor, one of the reasons why relationships fail is because clear expectations aren't set. So therefore, they can't be met. It's the same thing here, right? You want to set very clear expectations for your audience so that they understand everything you just said. Who is Jane? Why is she talking to me? What is she going to talk about? How, you know, what, what, and again, the format of the show. And I love what you said there. Cause you didn't say that in, in practice. Is she a breadwinning mom? I want to know that. Right. Because I want to know that people walk the walk that I walk. And, and that's very, very important. Right. Right. Okay. Do we, I know we're going to play the intro. Do we want to take a quick look at the cover art first? Okay, 
in the chat, what are your impressions of this cover art? What do you think of the colors, the graphic? Matt, what do you think? I think, can you actually do me a favor? We, we yeah. did this in, can you click on um, go up and click on uh, the shop? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So here, here's what I think is missing. There isn't brand consistency here. L look at this. This is the t this is her book, right? Mm -hmm. This should have been what she did. It should have been the cover of the book. It should have been the color. If it wasn't the cover of the book, it should have been. The it's not even the same font, right? And so, so these are things that I, I really, yeah. Uh, Kristen said um, the cover art doesn't really mm -hmm. pop to me, and the color colors seem bland. And and I, we we yeah. agree. Um, this is. Yeah, and she says she also agrees with the brand consistency piece. That that's that's incredibly incredibly important. Um, you should have you know consistency across every single solitary aspect of the business. Uh, this is a business, uh, and she has a book. So that that's my two cents on that. Yeah, and the design is just working really well. Anyway, you know, with the contrasting colors, the font, like, absolutely love it. Whereas the microphone it's like okay like we we get that it's a podcast any any cover art could have a microphone on it and you know this isn't just any podcast so it right. really should be distinct so i mean the good news with everything we've said it's like jane already has the resources you know to make to make some tweaks she really does okay shall we play the intro yeah but before we do i, I have to say this aloud we're starting this at two minutes and 10 seconds in. We're not going to play what happened before, but one of the things that we explicitly talk about is I, I, I've got to hook you right away. So go ahead and play. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Breadwinning Moms podcast. This is a place where we debunk the myths of working moms, cheer each other on, and show the world that is okay to be a mum and still pursue excellence in your chosen area of expertise. Today we're chatting with Carly Hopgood, a certified professional coach and the co-founder of Sage Group. Carly shared her life story about growing up in different parts of the world, building her roots in Sydney before making a sea change with her family to New Zealand and overcoming postnatal depression. Here we go with Carly Hopgood. Stop it there. All right, you're gonna go first this time. What do you think? I think based on her voice and her delivery, I like her. I like her, yeah, I just, she just has for me this likability factor. And when she went, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was just kind of cute. Um, and I don't mean that in a condescending way, but it's just mm -hmm. like, oh, she's endearing. Mm -hmm. I think her energy could be cranked up a little bit more. Now, I don't know, Matt, if this is the same intro that she uses for every single episode and she just sticks on the part about the guest. So I don't know if there's some intros where she's a little higher in energy or lower, but I certainly thought in this one, it could have been pumped up a little bit more to get us a little more excited. What do you think? Well, I'm going to go technical here real quick. And the technical piece of this is um, she was not very hydrated when she read this. You can hear mouth sounds. You can hear her lips and her mouth. Uh, anyway, if you don't have water uh, and you're trying to record something, you, it, if you're for a trained ear, you can hear that sort of sound. And that's just because she didn't drink enough water. Uh, other than that, um, I a hundred percent agree with you. I love, uh, her warmth. Um, I'm, I'm listening to the breadwinning mums podcast and, and, and I just immediately felt a connection with her. Um, there was a level of, of joy, but confidence. Um, I think she did a very good job. The, the problem is, is we're three minutes in before I know what's going on at all. Now, just so everybody knows, she she pitched her book at the beginning, which we do not recommend that you do that. That's actually could be a mid-roll ad or another way that you do the sprinkle that we talk about. 
Uh, and the other thing is uh, she she took a clip from Carly and put it on the front end of the show. Um, I, I, that stuff drives me crazy. I, I don't even know who this person is and you're, um, I'm hearing from them. I don't know who uh, tells the world that that's the right format for a show, but I wouldn't do that. So if, if, if I was Jane, what, what I would say very quickly is get into the content as quickly as you can, then do all of the other beautiful things uh, that, that you wanted to do. All right. Yeah, because because then when you promote the book, you could actually contextualize it with yeah. the conversation too, and make yep. it even more meaningful. So yeah. I'd love to see her try that. Yeah. Okay, so that was great. Thank you so much to Jane for submitting her podcast and just keep up the amazing work. Matt, shall we jump back in to the presentation? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and and by the way, Jane, if you are listening, which I really I really hope you are, because you didn't yeah. submit this to us. But I also realize it's probably three o'clock in the morning in New Zealand. Um, so the the replay. Listen, we're I'm going to offer you something. Please please just give me a direct message. Um, I, Jessica and I have a couple of other things that we'd love to talk to you about. Um, so just message me on LinkedIn or or message Jessica on LinkedIn, and and we can set up a time to to chat with you. That's convenient for you. All right. So here's the thing, everybody. I want everybody to understand that the majority of people who are on this webinar, because I, I know your names, have shows already. Um, right now, we're seemingly picking up a lot of existing shows and having them go into our system because our system works, right? Not only can we do all of the things that are on the screen for an existing show, but we can also do it for a brand new show. If you haven't started your journey yet, please, please, please make sure that you Find a trusted professional who has experience in your specific industry and they can really help you accelerate your influence and really be your own loud. We have the Managed Influence Service, which if you guys all don't know that, this is our full bloat service. We do audio, we do video, we do social media, we do podcast coaching, we have professional co-hosts. Um, we have lots of things that our competition does not, uh, including training for your team to help support you as the primary person who's creating the show in our Pod Rocket Influence Academy. Um, but the other thing that we're going to make sure that you do is you produce a great show. Uh, and that's not just the quality of the audio and production on the back end, but everything you need to do to prepare for the show. We have systems in place for all of that, including how to get guests, how to get them on the show, how to prepare them for a great show. Um, but, you know, here's the deal. We've done 7,000 episodes, everybody, 7,000. And we've done about 75,000 social media posts. This is what we do every day, all day. And there isn't anybody else who's even in the same uh, league that we are when it comes to podcast production uh, and content creation for financial services professionals. And we've got a testimonial or two here, uh, just so all of you know. So Larry um, started off uh, as a recovering CPA. He was not good uh, when he started, but now he is absolutely great. All he does is know what he wants to talk about. He communicates that with his producer of the show and his co-host. Then he drops the mic and we do everything else. Um, and then our, our, our other one uh, is, is now th this is really loaded because she's actually a friend of mine, but um, I, I love Adri to death. I think she's amazing in the Femex Advisor podcast and who she is and what she does is truly amazing. Um, but she consistently got business and reinforcement during her sale process that said, yes, Adri, I totally have listened to your show, which is what this whole system is for. It's not just a great client communication brand awareness tool, but it's also a great way for you to raise visibility, create more social proof of your expertise and get net new business. And if you want to know more, and if you uh, haven't started your show or if you'd like to transfer your show to us, we're the professionals who do this every single solitary day, please just scan this QR code. There's like two or three questions I want you to answer before uh, you schedule time with me. Um, this is a 30 minute uh, free consultation uh, that I'm more than happy to chat with you about how we can help you accelerate your influence and make it so that you too can rise above the noise and be your own loud. Now, we're running out of time for questions, uh, but again, uh, most of you, you've been on webinars before. Uh, we really, really appreciate your support. When you get the recording, you can share the recording with other people. If you know other financial services professionals or other highly regulated people who would love to be able to start their show or who are starting that podcasting journey, 
and really want to make sure that they're ticking all the boxes, we kind of went through them with you today. Uh, that was the whole goal of this, this uh, presentation that, that Jessica and I worked on is we want to be able to help you do this. If you want to do it on your own, we're going to give you everything that you need to do to do it on your own. If you realize that it's just far and away too much work, guess what? We can do it for you. All right. Do you have any closing thoughts, Jessica? You covered it all, but thank you so, so much, everyone, for being here. Really appreciate it. All right. We'll see everybody on our webinar in a couple of weeks. Please stay tuned. And if you haven't followed us on social, please do. We'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.